What is up guys, today we're going to be looking at gameplay update 7.35 and 7.35b for Dota 2. I've got a couple of ideas for some broken item builds with these new items but I've got to test it out to really see if they do work so we're going to be looking at that today and we're going to figure out what this patch means for the overall meta of Dota right now. So let's jump straight in. So neutral creep bounties decreased by 2 across the board which is going to mean jungling is a bit less efficient. Super creeps and mega creeps attack damage increased by 5, so it gives more emphasis on destroying the barracks early. Courier health is replaced with attacks to kill. Courier dies after one melee attack or two ranged hero attacks. So you're probably going to see in your pubs a lot of bounty hunters one-shotting your couriers so please be careful guys couriers can no longer be healed and they can't regenerate health i didn't even know they could fountain now deals 25 percent splash damage in a 250 radius around the target so it makes fountain diving a little bit harder not much to be honest but i guess that's good added watchers in the mines and wells area there are now two additional watchers one right at the top of the map on the dire side there's a watcher that gives this vision around here which is pretty useful and there's also a watcher on the radiant side which gives this vision here which is pretty useful too teleport times to outposts in the radiant and dire jungles decrease from six seconds to four seconds that's actually a big change and it's gonna be really helpful using twin gates now costs 75 mana units without mana can use twin gates for free Okay. Tormenta can now no longer have less than zero armor, so that makes Slardar and heroes with minus armor a bit less effective at taking the Tormentor. But the Tormentor now has an ability, the Shining, which deals 30 damage per second on 0.2 second intervals, 6 damage per tick, distributing evenly among all new units within 1200 range. So it sounds like the Tormentor is a little bit more difficult to kill. Added new Roshan ability, Roar of Retribution. If attacked by the team that last killed him, Roshan will release a Roar that is heard globally, damages all units in 900 AoE, and applies a debuff on them that increases incoming damage by 25%, which triggers when Roshan's health drops below 80%. Bonus damage increases every 10 minutes, and the cooldown is 20 seconds. Alright, so basically, if the enemy team has taken Roshan and they're in the lead, the next time Roshan spawns, it's going to tell the other team, hey, they're taking Roshan right now with a big roar, basically. Which makes it easier to come back and take Roshan fights if you're behind, which is a good good addition. I like that. Added a new Roshan drop, Roshan's Banner. It creates a banner anywhere on the map that buffs allied lane creeps for 45 seconds once they walk in a 250 radius, increasing their health by 75% and damage by 50%. The banner lasts for 5 minutes or it can be destroyed with 6 hero attacks. The item is consumed on use, placing the banner informs an enemy team about its location. Multiple banners do not stack. Starting with the third death, Roshan now drops a fresher shard on the Radiant side and Aghanim's Blessing on the Dire side. Double Damage Rune is now renamed to Amplified Damage Rune. Base damage bonus decreased from 100% to 80% and now also provides 15% spell amplification. So much better for spellcasting heroes, not just melee heroes. Invisibility Rune now grants 25% damage reduction and 5 additional percent for each full rune cycle. Okay, so later in the game, it's going to give even more damage reduction which is pretty good. Haste rune now lasts for 22 seconds plus 3 seconds for each rune cycle. So again, later in the game, haste rune is going to last much, much longer. Arcane rune cooldown reduction decreased from 30% to 25%. It's kind of whatever. Regeneration rune is no longer disabled by taking damage. Instead, it lowers the regen rate to 1% HP MP per second. Ah, okay. Heroes like Storm Spirit, you can zip in. You're still going to have regen when you get hit. And then you can zip out. And you're still going to have some regen. It's pretty good. Moved four trees, whoop de doo Added support for a new bonus AoE radius. Area of effect, increasing width and radius of spells does not affect length and ranges that are already increased by ether lens. Also ignores auras and passive aura like components of some active spells, i.e. earns soul gathering radius and silences in still range. Okay, so stuff like Pudge, Silencer and Urn are not going to be affected by the range. So without Bloodstone, max level Split Earth does that. With Bloodstone, Max level split earth does that. So with Bloodstone, your black hole radius makes it much easier to get that five man black hole. That's actually a huge radius for black hole. It actually could make a difference in a lot of team fights. So that's really cool. I like this. Wow, I actually didn't even know that there was a 49% chance instead of a 50. Game breaking bug. Fair enough. Fixed Lotus pool. Lotus is not spawning at exact minute mark. Okay. Ring of Tarask, which is a new item and is a component of Pipe of Insight, Heart of Tarask, and Refresher Orb. 
Tierra of Selamine, which is now a component for Octarine Core, Refresher Orb, and Cypher Vice. Candor, which requires Crystallis, Phylactery, and 600 gold recipe. 50 damage, 200 health, 200 mana, and 8 to all attributes. 30% crit chance of 160 critical damage on attack. And also has a passive empower spell. The spell is similar to Phylactery's passive, but bonus damage is rescaled from 100 flat to 100 plus 75 of your attack damage. Right, so this opens up a couple of broken things. I'm a sniper with one, two, three, four, five Vine Rapiers. Can I one shot this 2400 health bounty hunter? Let's see. Yes, is the answer. Okay, so we've now got Axe with three Divine Rapiers, a Heart, Blink, and Candor. Culling Blade should do 625 damage plus the instance of Candor, which is 100 plus 75% of my attack damage. So how much does it do instantly? About 2,000. Okay, so in theory, if you've got Axe with a Blink, Heart, Candor, three Rapiers, you are going to do... 2,499 damage. So if you jump in, chop, chop, chop. Wow. That would give you fun though, even if you get one dunk. It's worth it. Parasma requires Witchblade, Mystic Staff at a total cost of 5575, provides 45 intellect, 40 attack speed, 8 armor, and 300 attack projectile speed. Magic Corruption. All your attacks apply 20% minus 20% magical resistance debuff on enemies for 4 seconds. Passive Witchblade. The spell is similar to Witchblade's passive, but intellect multiply is increased from 0.75 to 1. Cooldown is increased for 7 seconds. So, 182 per tick. For four ticks so you can see on corp or someone like that this is going to be really good so you use that hit them once and they've got a nearly 260 debuff every second it's actually really good so you're six slotted you got a thousand damage just from one hit javelin cost decreased and pierce damage decreased <coughs> core staff was removed from the game ring of health item is no longer in the secret shop but it's in your main shop so don't forget Ultima Orb cost increased and all attribute bonus increased by 5. Void Stone is moved from the secret shop to the main shop. Arcane Boots changed recipe now requires Boots of Speed, Rang of Basilius and a 375 gold recipe. No longer provides mana and also provides 0.75 mana regen and 1 aura. Bloodstone now provides 75 AoE which we've tested. Bloodthorn Iron Rework. So, now requires Orchid of Malevolence, Javelin, Hyperstone, and 450 gold recipe. Total increase from 6,800 to 6,825. Intelligence bonus from 32 to 15. Manager regen bonus decrease from 5 to 3. And bonus damage decrease from 35 to 10. Health regen bonus increased. And attack speed bonus increased. No longer provides 25% magic resistance. No longer pro provides Mage Slayer's passive. Now it provides Javelin's passive. Effects is similar, but the piercing chances increase from 30% to 40%. Soul Rend now also causes all attacks against the target to deal 60 bonus magical damage. So you've now got Broodmother. She's got some spiders here. Broodmother uses this. And spiders. Now machine guns. Oh wow, this is so broken. This is going to be ridiculous. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus, this is going to be crazy. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this in my pubs. Butterfly recipe now changed and requires a claymore instead of a quarter staff and total increased. Now provides 20% base attack speed. Okay, so attack speed goes from 305 to 437. Okay, it's pretty significant. And it obviously has the evasion still and the damage and agility, so yeah, pretty good. Deadless cost from 1000 to 900, wow. Disperser now requires Diffusal Blade, Eagle Song, no longer grants 45 damage, but increased agility and suppression duration increased 5 seconds. Divine Rapier now also provides 25% spell amp, that's really good, especially for spellcasters. Echo Saber now requires Ogre Axe, Broadsword and Void Stone. Total cost is increased from 2500 to 2700, no longer provides int or attack speed. The damage bonus is increased and the strength bonus is increased. Eternal Shroud. Now requires Cloak, Ogrex, Vitality Booster, and an 800 gold recipe. Total increase from 3-1 to 3-6. No longer provides 7 health regen. Now provides 300 health. Magic resistance bonus decrease from 35 to 25. That's pretty big. Shroud percentage of damage as mana restored 
we scaled from 30% after reductions to 20% before reduction. Now has an additional passive, Eternal Endurance. For every 300 magical damage equipped hero receives, it gains a stack to up to a maximum of 6. Each stack increases Eternal Shroud's base magic resistance by 4% and lasts for 8 seconds. Stack duration is independent from each other. So Quop's ult does... Supposed to do 900 pure damage. Uh... So it did like 250, 250, and Scream does about 50 damage. Okay, how much damage does Lesh do to Medusa? Um, still pretty unkillable to be honest. Not invincible, but uh, that is a lot of magic resist. Medusa is going to be very hard to kill with this one item. Interesting. Ethereal Blade recipe changed. Now requires Ether Lens, Ghost Scepter, and 1600 gold recipe. Total cost increased from 4650 to 5375. No longer provides any of Kaya based bonuses. Now provides 8 to all attributes, 300 mana, free regen, and 250 cast range. So if you're going to build Ether Lens, you're going to have to build Ethereal Blade. Okay, so really good for Lena. So even as a support, I think you're going to buy this pretty much every game. Gives you the cast range you want and the magical damage increase. I think this is a must buy for Lena or any range support really lie into. Gives you the cast range bonus and the magical damage increase. Eye of Scardy recipe change now requires ultimate or point booster and 1300 gold recipe. Attack speed reduction rescaled from 30 to 60 to 10% and 20%. Okay. Bifana recipe decreased. Now also provides value attack speed. No longer provides 250 mana for guarding grease. Now provides 1.5 mana regen. And the aura also provides mana regen and health if you're low. Harpoon total at cost increased by 200. So it's basically all the Echo Saber nerfs. Heart of Trust now requires Reaver, Ring of Tarasks, and 600 gold. No longer provides 250 health. Helm of the Overlord recipe changed. All attribute bonus increased from 7 to 21. That's actually quite a lot. And it no longer provides the aura. Holy Locket now requires Diadem, ma Magic Wand, no longer grants regeneration aura. All attributes decrease from 10 to 9. Energy charge and health mana increased. Lincoln Sphere recipe change now requires ultimate or perseverance 600 gold. No longer provides 10 damage. Recipe change of Maelstrom. Gulliver's of Haste is now included. Okay. Now provides attack speed. Cool. Chain lightning damage is decreased very slightly. 15 damage. Mage Slayer total cost increased from 2500 to 2625. Attack speed bonus increased by 25. That's good. No longer provides 20 damage. Mage Slayer debuff now also deals 20 damage per second yes. so that's going to be really good on Venomancer look at that look at the dots coming off of that so you've got three dots Mage Slayer Poison Sting yeah that, that's actually really good for Venomancer anyone who's got a natural dot it's just going to help it's going to do more damage Dull recipe change now requires Yasha Diamond 1550 recipe Mask of Madness now requires Morbid Mask Broadsword and total cost increase to 1900. No longer provides attack speed, but it increases damage by 20. Medallion of Courage is removed from the game. Meet Your Hammer has had a recipe change. Now requires Crown Kaya, an 800 gold recipe. Total increase from 2004 to 3300. That's a lot. No longer provides health regen or mana regen, but it provides 24 int. Agility and strength bonus decreased by 2. Now provides 10% spell amp, which is good. 24% lifesteal spell amp, and 75% mana regen amplification. The dot for both units and buildings is decreased by 10, and the Meteor building impact is decreased by 5. Meteor Hammer unit impact damage decreased from 150 to 130. Okay. Molinier recipe decreased from 800 to 550. Attack speed increased by 20. Monkey King bar recipe cost increased by 200. Oblivion staff. Now requires Blitz Knuckles and Stage Mask and Robe of the Magi. Total cost increased from 15 to 1600. Octarine Core now requires Tierra of Sub Selamine, Soul Booster, and its total cost increased from 46 to 48. And a regen increased from 5 to 6. Orb of Corrosion item rework. Now requires Orb of Venom, Ring of Protection, Gloves of Haste, and total cost decreased from 925 to 900. Provides free armor, 25 attack speed, and adds a passive corrosion. Attacks on enemies apply debuff that deals 5 damage per second. 
second, slows enemies by 13% if you're melee and 4% if you're ranged. If the equipped hero is melee ranged, increase health they regain from healing and life regeneration and spell life steal by 20% for 3 seconds. Damage over time affects buildings. I think this is a must buy for Venom Answer specifically. You're going to get minus 20% health regeneration, 20% plus your talent, which is going to give you another 15% of health regeneration reduction so you're now up to 35 percent so you just get these two items and you're not going to be regenerating much at all let's say you get a vessel on top of that level 30 alchemist all i've got is vessel orb of corrosion and the talent and he's not regenerating at all like this is a super hard counter to alchemist super hard counter he can't even regen Orchid of Malevolence now requires Oblivion Staff, Cornucopia, and 650 gold recipe. Pavis recipe change now requires Energy Booster, Ring of Protection, Fluffy Hat, and 175 gold recipe. Total cost unchanged, no longer provides mana regen or mana. Flactory recipe changed, and no longer provides 0.7 mana regen. Pipe of Insight now total cost has increased from 3375 to 3725, and health regen bonus is increased from 6 to 14. Refresher Orb now requires Cornucopia, Ring of Tarask, Tiara of Salamine, and 200 gold recipe. Health regen bonus increased from 12 to 18. Mana regen bonus increased from 6 to 8, and damage bonus decreased from 20 to 10. Revenance Brooch Item Reworked now requires Sacred Relic, Voodoo Mask, and total cost decreased from 6,200 to 4,900, that's a massive decrease. Provide 70 damage and 20% spell life steal. Phantom Province, activate to make your attacks cost 75 mana and deal magic damage. Allows you to hit ethereal units. So level 30 Necro, level 30 Venomancer, toggled on Revenant's Brooch. He uses Ghost Shroud, doesn't matter at all. It's still gonna just, you're gonna keep killing him. You can kill him throughout the whole thing, but that drains your mana very quickly. Sight of Vice now requires Mystic Staff, Tierra Salamine, 600 gold, no longer provides 10 strength with 10, 10 agility, but, and the bonus int decreased from 35 to 30. Shiva's Guard, recipe changed, Veil of Discord, Plate Mail, 1700 recipe, decreased by 25. <coughs> Now provides 6 strength, agility, and health regen. Intelligence bonus decreased by 30, from 30 to 8. <coughs> <coughs> Armor bonus increased from 15 to 20. Arctic Blast now causes enemies to take 15% more magic damage from spells for 16 seconds. So, chasing off the Necro, use that, use that, use that. And Necro's pretty, he's pretty, pretty done for. Interesting. Hmm. Silverish now requires Shadow Blade, Demon Edge, and 250 gold recipe. Total cost unchanged. Damage bonus increased from 50 due to 60. No longer provides critical hits. So Silver Edge is no longer going to provide critical hits. But the Shadow Walk bonus damage is increased from 175 to 300. Solar Crest now requires Pavis Crown, Wind Lace, and 600 gold recipe. Total cost increased from 245 to 2700. No longer provides mana regen, but it provides health and mana. Shine ability now grants a 400, 400 HP barrier. Can be applied on self, but does not grant bonus armor. Shine can no longer be cast on enemies. So, oh my god, you got Abaddon of Solar Crest. Abaddon, shield, shield. You've now got 610 shield. Oh my god, this is going to be so broken. Veil of Discord now requires Helm of Iron Wheel, Crown, and 300 gold recipe. Total cost increased from 1525 to 1725. Now provides 5 health regen and 6 armor. Magic weakness. Spell damage amp decreased from 18 to 10%. And the weakness is now untargetable, but is applying a debuff to all enemies. Okay, so it's like um, Shiva's where it blows up. Which Blade now requires Oblivion Staff, Chainmail, and 600 gold recipe. Total increase from 2600 to 2775. Attack speed bonus increased from 35 to 40. And now provides 1.5 mana regen. So neutral item updates safety bubble tier 1. Grants 5 health regen and grants 100 HP barrier. The barrier is fully restored after not receiving any damage for 5 seconds. What about damage over time? Does that, does that matter? It doesn't, oh my god, doesn't, it literally voids out poison stings damage. Royal Jelly tier 1 neutral item provides 50 health and 50 mana. Active, consume, consumes all charges of jelly and grants a targeted ally unit a buff that provides 2 health regen and 1 mana regen per charge for 10 seconds. If the target takes damage from Roshan or an enemy hero, the effect is lost. Max 10 charges, charge restore time, 8 seconds. Light Collector, tier 2 neutral item, 
10% movement speed and provides a wearer of 6 health regen during the day, 3 mana regen during the night. If the wearer is not within 200 radius of a tree, the active light breaker produces a flash of light that destroys trees in 325 radius around the wearer. So, your versus Timber, he's coming right up close to do his whirling death. You press that and it doesn't do as much damage. <laughs> so it's, it's gonna be, or maybe like an escape. If you want to escape with your trees, you just blow them up and then run through. Maybe, it might be situationally good, possibly. I don't know, seems a bit meme to me, but it might be good. Whisper of the Dread, tier 2, 150 mana, grants 10% spell amp, but decreases the wearer's daytime vision by 15%. Okay, it's kind of whatever. Ring of Aquila cycled out, doubloon. Tier 3 neutral item, 5 health regen, 2.5 mana regen, converts 20% of your max health to max mana, or 20% of your max mana to max health. So it's hard to know which one you've done. So I think I've done mana now, so I'll go back and get the health back here. It doesn't actually increase your current mana, so it will not give you mana if you're out of mana. It's just going to increase your maximum. Okay, Nemesis Curse. 35 damage, the wearer takes 8% more damage from all sources, but applies a debuff to enemies that increases their damage taken by 12%. Cool, Craggy Co. Armor bonus decreased from 12 to 6, and attack speed no longer reduced. Toughen up increases armor by additional 12, the cost of 30% movement speed, duration is 8 seconds, cooldown 12. Fair enough. Quickening charm cycled out, Titan Sil Sliver cycled out. Ancient Guardian. 50 damage if you're near an ancient. Aviana's Feather, prize 25% evasion, 30% movement speed, and free bird. When below 30% health, the wearer gains flying movement. Huskar, jump in. And he's gonna be able to fly. We see ya. <laughs> Rattle Cage, new tier 4 item, provides 12 armor and reverberate. After taking 108 damage from any source, the wearer fires a projectile at up to two random nearby enemies within 600 radius, prioritizing heroes that deals 125 damage, physical damage, and slows the target's movement speed and attack speed by 100% for 0 0.2 seconds. So, looks like a really good item for Bristleback. Oh look, and it slows her, yeah, so she can't even run that fast. Anyone who's close is just going to die. Oh, so I'm not even pressing my own double use here. This is just from Rattle Cage. It's killing everyone else too. Wow, that, that is kind of crazy for Bristleback, honestly. Penetrated Sword is removed from the game and Spell Prism is removed also. Unwavering Condition. New item. Tier 5. Provides 95% magic resistance. But the wearer's max health is set to 1500. So I've got 1500 health and I'm tiny. <laughs> it makes a character portrait really small. So, does Lesh do any damage? That's the question. Uh, I mean, more than you'd expect, to be honest. With 95% magic resistance, still, still able to kill him. Alright, it's mostly from Diabolic Edict, that's why, because it's pure. Magic Lamp, Tier 5. Rejuvenation Hell increase from 300 to 1000. Ex Machina cycled out, and Fallen Sky cycled out. Here are updates. Abaddon. Curse of Avernus now deals 30, 40, 50, and 60 damage per second to the target when it procs for the duration of the curse. Damage interval 0.5. And damage to buildings is reduced by 70%. Now deals damage over time. Cheers. I guess that's pretty good for carry Abaddon. Not really relevant to support Abaddon. Alchemist, mana cost decrease for acid spray and debuff duration increase by 0.5 seconds, whatever. Ancient Apparition, Talent, Ice Vortex, replaced with Ice Blast, Frostbitten duration. Anti-Mage, max mana burn increase from 0.6 to 1%. And a Talent for mana void damage multiply increase. Arc Wall and Talent, Magnetic Field, Attack Speed bonus. Decreased from 25 to 20, and Tempest double duration decreased from 12 seconds to 10. Axe's Berserker Cool, bonus armor decreased from 25 to 16, basically to scale, and temporary boost on kill no longer provides 20, 30, 40 attack speed. Temporary boost on kill now provides 20, 25, and 30 armor. That's really good. And a level 10 talent for 10 Berserker's Cool armor replaced with 4 second Cunning Blade speed bonus. It's pretty cool. Heal and damage increase for Bane's Brain Sap, but the same at later levels, and a mana cost slightly less late game. Aghanim Shard now also decreases cooldown by 3 seconds. Cast range increased on Nightmare, which is pretty good. Bat Rider Flame Break, movement slow increased from 10, 15, 30, so it's better overall. And projectile speed increased, which is good. Firefly cooldown decreased, so that is actually quite good. 4 seconds at the late game, that's really good. Flaming Lesso, added AoE indicator for secondary grab targets for Aghanim Scepter. Beastmaster 2 damage, base increase, base damage increase, agility grain, 
increased from 1.4 to 1.6. Level 20 talent, 35 boar attack damage replaced with 30 boar and hawk damage. Pretty good. Bloodseeker, blood rage, max health damage per second decreased from 1.8 to 1.5. Aghanim shard, damage life still rescaled from 1.8 of target max HP to flat. 30 pure damage and heal. Blood right damage type change from pure to magical. Damage increase from, okay, so 240 in the late game to 320 in late game. It's pretty good. Level 10 blood rage spell amp increase from 810, it's kind of whatever. Blood right damage increase from 85 to, to uh, again, that's whatever. 15, level 15 half track bonus speed to allies are placed with 45 track gold, I guess that's okay. 250 track gold replaced with no cooldown on Janada. So you get three moon shards. Level 30 bounty. Track. Oh my god, so much gold. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. Look at that. So much money. I really do hope I see that in some pubs. That is going to be hilarious. Earth, Brueling, Demolish bonus decreased. Level 20 attack speed increased. Aghanim Shard stack limit decreased from 7 to 6. Aghanim Scepter cooldown increased from 20 to 24. 20 damage replaced with 25 attack speed. Hoof Stomp damage decreased. And overall late game is exactly the same. Level 15 double edge strength damage decreased from 40% to 35. It's a bit whatever. Critical life still on Chaos Knight decreased at the early level. And then increased. No, it's exactly the same late game. Okay. So this is just, just laning stage really. Chen. Attack range bonus is now applied to all range units under Chen's control. Holy Persuasion can no longer be used to teleport control units to Chen. And Divine Favor's ability rework passively provides an aura increases health regen by one two three four to all allies units within 1200 range can be cast on ally within aura by them with 12 16 20 24 armor and increase any healing they receive by 20 percent effect duration six seconds self casting teleports any units under chance control to him after six second delay clinks actually gaining an increase from 2.5 to 2.7 mana cost on burning barrage increased and cooldown decreased 70 seconds death pack bonus health increased from 300 to 350 talent strafe cooldown reduction for Eight seconds to nine seconds. Clockwork strength gain increased from 2.8 to 3.1. It's pretty good. And overclock now does not stun. Crystal Maiden Arcane Aura self mana regen multiplier increased from six to seven. And Crystal Clone can now be destroyed by Crystal Maiden's own AOE spells. Crystal Nova and Fees and Field. And the radius is increased. So you're Crystal Maiden. You're being chased. Turn around. Press that. Use that. And then use your ult. Or you can even use it in your ult and it will destroy them and immobilize them straight away. I actually really like that. 15 talent crystal nova cooldown reduction reduced from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. Crystal nova damage increased from 240 to 300. Dark set iron shell mana cost decreased and wall of replica now deals 25, 40 and 55 damage to an enemy when an illusion of them is created. That's pretty good. Dark Willow. Duration until max damage decreased from 3.5 seconds to 3 seconds. Curse Crown. Stun duration increased. Talent and Shadow Realm duration decreased from 2 seconds to 1.5. Dawnbreaker Fire Trail duration increased from 2.5 seconds to 4 seconds in late game. That was definitely needed. She needed a farming tool that was much better than it was. So that's good. Dazzle. Poison Touch now affects heroes to be denied if they fall below 25% health. Okay. You can deny people now with poison touch that's good bad juju no longer affects item cooldowns thank god we're going to see no more dazzle midas jesus that was so bad health cost increase per cast decrease from 50 to 40 percent death profit silence now sl also slows enemy movement speed by 10 20 25 it's probably i mean that was needed talent crypt Corm applies 50 percent slow for one second replaced with 15 percent silent move speed slow disruptor thunder strike aghanim shard dormant duration increase from five to seven seconds static storm radius increase from 500 to 550 Level 15 talent. Glyps max damage increase from 250 to, 7, to 275. And Thunderstrike slow duration increase from 0 0.5 to 0, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. Doom's base movement speed increase from 285 to 290. Devour. Neutral abilities now level up automatically at the time when the neutral abilities would scale. Infernal Blade cooldown decrease from 12 to 4 seconds. So it's the same in the late game. Doom no longer makes a hero deniable. Wow, that's really good. That is actually a super big buff because you could always just deny them after Doom. So I really like that. Level 20 Infernal Blade, max HP is damage increased from 1.5 to 2%. Dragonite Breathe Fire now applies corresponding Corrosive Breath and Frost Breath debuffs from his current level of Elder Dragon form, even in human form. That's really good. I think he needed that buff. Drow Ranger now reveals invisible units just as a part of the spell. And Glacier now does not interrupt multi shot on cast. Level 15 Talent Gust reveals invisible units replaced with 20% lifesteal. Okay, it's kind of whatever. Echo Slam damage increased. 
by five in the late game. Mana cost rescaled be a little bit less expensive in the late game. Elder Time, max HP is damage increased from 30 to 50%, so it's the same in the late game. Ember, Spirit, Unit Count increased from two to three for Searing Cream. So you can th you can get three man Searing Change. That's actually really good. And Slight of Fist bonus hero damage increased in the late game by 15. Flame Guard, increased radius. That's pretty good. Enchant, now deal 20. 30, 40, 50 damage per second when used on enemy heroes. No longer provides 0, 3, 6, 9 armor to enchanted creeps. Okay. 8% magic resistance that's placed with 10 enchanted creep armor. Enigma's demonic summoning. Eidol Eidolon's health is increased by 4% of Enigma's current health. Eidolons now preserve their commanded attack when they split. Ah, that's good. Midnight Post now deals 5, 10, 15, 20 base damage. Current health has damage decreased from, okay, so it's just 1% lower in the late game, and radius decreased from 650. So I have six Heart of Tarasks. My Eidolons will have 523 health. Wow, that is so crap. Faceless Void. Strength gain increased from 2.4 to 2.6. Pretty good. Time dilation DPS decreased. Time dilation talent slow decreased. Grimstroke. Aglam Shard deal heal bonus decreased from 40% to 30%. I think that's well needed. He did need a nerf. Soulbind cooldown decreased from 70 to 60 in the late game. Gyrocopter. Cooldown ability reworked now always shoots three missile strikes in the vector targeted direction with a single missile per strike. Each missile deals 250, 400, 550 damage and slows enemy movement speed by 50% for four seconds. Delay between strikes increased from 0.5 to one second. Strike radius decreased from six to 400. Mana cost increased. So let's say you know the direction they're running. Well, if, <laughs> if they outrun the first one, you're pretty buggered. So you kind of have to do it yeah, you have to like kind of predict which way they're gonna run, and then you can get them. Hoodwink bonus damage shot increased from 50, so in the late game it increased by 20, so that's really good. And then bushwhack total damage decreased in the late game by 60. That's actually pretty significant. Invoker base damage decreased by one, and strength gain increased by 0.2. Io Teva now deals 10, 20, 30, 40 damage per second to enemies caught in the Teva. Tick rate 0 0.5. Kachikiro Jewel Breath. Start radius decreased from 225 to 150, end radius is unchanged. Movement slow decreased from 40, so it's the late game is the same. And attack slow decrease is exactly the same in the late game, so it's just worse in the early game. Juggernaut damage tick rate rescaled from permanent 0 0.2. Juggernaut's attack rate at current attack speed multiplier by 2. Damage rescaled from 90, 115, 140, 165 to 35, 40, 45, 50 damage per tick. Aghanim Shard rework now increases Blade Fury radius by 100 and slows enemy movement speed by 35. <coughs> so with 6 Moon Shards, it deals 1,845. With Bloodstone, does increase it okay interesting ah, okay so if we could pop that do a big heal super big heal so you can nearly 100 blade for a radius replaced with 100 150 healing wall radius five all stats replaced with 10 percent blade dance crit damage 100 Blade Fury DPS rescaled with 30 movement speed during Blade Fury. Keep of the light, Willow Wisp, Ignis Fentus now deals 75 damage per flicker. Recall also casts Chakra Magic on both Keep of the Light and the NI teleporting onto. Talent Blinding Light Miss Increase, decrease increase from 30 to 40. Talent Chakra Magic Dispels, replaced with 1.5 Solar Bind Stun when target is fully slow. That's pretty good. And then Talent Illuminate Damage Increase from 180 to 200, that's whatever. Talent 1.2 second blinding light stun replaced with Chakra Magic Strong Dispel. That's actually really good for late game. With Chakra Magic Strong Dispel, he gets RP'd. You can cancel it. That is pretty good in the late game, to be honest. Kunker. Torrent Storm mana cost increase from 250 to 275. Minimum spawn descent decrease from 300 to 150. And then 65 Torrent AoE replaced with minus 4 seconds Torrent cooldown. Legion Commander. Aghanim Shard no longer provides bonus armor or duration. Aghanim Shard now increases overwhelming odds AoE by 250 when cast during duel. Aghanim Shard now provides 8 damage per duel 1 and it applies retroactively. 
That is actually really good. Level 10 talent, eight bonus damage replaced with 8% press attack movement speed. The Shrek Diabolic Edict, damage increased from seven to, so it's two more in the late game. Lightning Storm now also slows attack speed by 50. That's actually really good for lightning. Lich's Sinister Gaze, mana drain per second increased from 10% to 12%. Ice Spire movement slow decreased from 35 to 25. And level 10 talent, Frost Blast radius and damage decreased from 150 to 125. Life Stealer, bonus movement speed decrease from 15 it's the same in the late game just not as good in the early Lena level 20 talent 11 percent spell amplification replaced with plus five laguna supercharged stacks level 25 talent laguna blade damage is pure it's replaced with 150 percent crit on targets affected by dragon slave lion base health regen increased from 0.25 to 0.5 seconds mana drain now damages enemies for 100 percent of the mana drained that's really freaking good so you're gonna damage people for as much mana as you drain so i think you pretty much have to pick lion why not if there's a medusa because look how much damage that does <coughs> that does so much to medusa because it does damage and drains mana so you hexa drain stun Lone Druid's st strength gain decreased from 2.0 to 1.8. Summon Spirit Bear. Bear armor decreased from 345, 6 to 0, 246. So it's the same in the late game. Fetch duration increased from 2.25 to 2.5. Fetch no longer slows the bear. Okay, whatever. Savage Roar radius increased from 7, 375 to 350. And then 15 talent bear armor decreased from 8 to 7. It's a bit whatever. And a Savage Roar. Reduction increase from 8 to 7 seconds. So a couple nerfs. Magnus now additionally deals 6 to 15 percent of the distance traveled as damage. Damage decreased from 90 360 to 2 AE. Level 15 talent. All stats per hit with reverse polarity increased from 8 to 10. Marcy. Rebound. Impact damage rescaled from 75 to 310. Okay. Unleash cooldown decreased at the late game, exactly the same. And then level 15 talent disposed damage increased from 70 to 90. Mars. Backswing decreased from zero from 1.03 seconds to 0 0.15 seconds. That is actually a massive buff. No longer toggles off Bulwark if cast while Bulwark is active. God's Reboot critical damage increased to 300% in the late game. Bulwark active now grants Mars phase movement. An active projectile redirection now also protects allies that are up to 200 range in front of Mars. Get phased movement speed when it's on. Yeah, so I can just walk through people. You can just, just get it. So this is what you really want to do. You want to do that. And then block them from both side to side. <laughs> if you can ever pull that off in a game, that's going to be hilarious. Medusa agility gain increased from 3.4 to 3.6. Split shot outgoing increased damage at the late game by 5%. And then level 10 talent stone gauge bonus physical damage increased from 5% to 8%. And level 20 talent mystic stake bonus bounces increased from 2 to 3. Meepo damage type changed from pure to magical. Okay. And then damage increased from 40 to so 100 to 150 in the late game. Level 10 talent poof damage increased from 30 to 50, and Marana intelligence gain increased from 1.2 to 1.4. Darkstorm radius increased from 650 to 675, and Aghanim Shard now guarantees a secondary Starstorm strike on all enemies affected by the slow if Starstorm has been cast. So you got Ags, jump in, Starstorm, then arrow as well. That could be a combo. Of course. Gunsling is now toggleable and no longer prioritizes heroes. That's that's a, that's definitely enough. Pierce the veil. Bonus attacks damage decreased from 70 to 150 to 130 in the late game. Naga strength gain decreased from 2.6 to 2.4. Level 10 talent rip tide damage decreased from 30 to 25. Nature's profit agility gain decreased from 3.4 to 3.2. And base manager regen decreased from 0 0.75 to 0. Necropos death pulse mana cost increased from 100 to 160 in the late game. So it's exactly the same agonim set the health regen to decay decrease 55 to 50 if it's kind of nothing really level 20 heart stop a talent regen reduction decrease from 30 to 25 so a little bit of a nerf i think it's definitely needed night stalker base mana regen increase from 0 to 0 0.25 mana cost decreased in the late game by 5 hunter in the night agonim shard max health restore decrease from 35 to 30 and level 50 talent dark ascension damage decrease from 35 to 30 okay it's kind of whatever 
Nyx no longer requires Nyx Assassin to face the direction when casting spells. I had no idea that was even a thing. Level 10 talent, 6% spell amp, replaced with 75 and data damage. Okay. Level 10 ignite, DPS decrease from 16 to 15, and then 250 health replaced with 0, zero 01. Dumb luck, max mana regen per strength. Omni Knight, Guardian Angel, ability rework. Now as a single target ability with 900 cast range, mana cost decreased from 150 all the way to 200 late game. 160 cooldown replaced with two charges. Charge restore time is 80, 70, 60. Aghanim set to rework. Now grants an additional charge. Increases cast range to global and always cast Guardian Angel on Omni Knight as well as the target. And then a 30 second Guardian Angel replaced with 15% Arctic Angel. Guardian Angel charge restore three charges. So you do one. He's fighting. Still fighting two. So as a carry, your carry carry can just go ham, and you can just sit in the back line, and just keep doing that. Three, three charges. <laughs> now just sitting there fighting, invulnerable to magic. I think that with Oracle. If you have Oracle and Omni, I don't think your carry can ever die. Oracle, Purifying Flames, cast point improved from 0.15 to 0.10. False Promise, cast range decreased, 900 to 100 in the late game. Level 10, level 15 talent, 80%, 18 fortune, 80 fortunes and damage replaced with 60 enemy damage heal. Outward Destroyer, Sanity Eclipse, Radius decreased in the late game, exactly the same. And then 20 strength replaced with 20% spell life still. Pangolid. Damage type change from magical to physical and cooldown in ball form is now always decreased by 963. Level 15 talent, 3 second shield crash in ball replaced with 80 shield crash per barrier, 80 shield crash barrier per hero. And level 20 talent, 100 shield crash barrier per hero replaced with 125 shield crash radius. Phantom Assassin, intelligence gain increased from 1.4 to 1.7. Base movement speed increased from 305 to 310. Phantom Strike no longer provides a life still, that's a pretty big nerf. And the duration is increased from 2 seconds to 2.5. Phantom of Knives, damage type change from pure to physical, and a max health damage increase from 16 to 25%. Phantom Lancer, intelligence gain decreased from 2.0 to 1.8. Spirit Lance, Aghanim Scepter no longer increases movement slow, that's good. Then the level 10 talent, 8 strength replaced with 10 Phantom Rush Agility, that's quite good. Level 15 talent, Spirit Lance, cooldown reduction decreased from 1.5 to 1 second. And then Phoenix, Fire Spirits, projectile speed increase from 900 to 1000 sunray aghanim shard movement speed slow decrease from 12 percent to 10 percent level 10 spell amp replaced with 20 icarus dive damage per second that's pretty shit that's a pretty big nerf to be honest primal beast rock throw max travel time decreased from 1.7 seconds to 1.5 fragment flight distance decreased uh, fragment so basically just a buff to rock throw illusionary orb cooldown decrease in the late game by one second so with octarine core that's actually pretty big on park level 10 warning rift silence duration increase from 0 0.5 0 0.75 to one second talent initial break dream core damage increase from 150 150 150 to 175 level 10 talent armor increase from 4 to 5 and 15 talent b hook damage increase from 120 to 140 pagna pagna base agility decrease from 24 to 21 and never worked Never ward cooldown increase from 35 seconds to 40. Level 10 talent plus 20 movement speed replaced with 10% decrep modify. Decrepify movement speed to allies. Queen of Pain. Shadow Strike Aghanim Scepter Radius decrease from 400 to 375. Scream of Pain mana cost rescaled rescale from 10, 20, 30 to 120. And then 8 strength replaced with 10 Shadow Strike Heal but tick. Talent increase from 15 to 25 talent damage increase from 15 to 25 talent sonic wave reduction increase from 40 to 45 seconds talent sonic wave damage increase from 20 to 200 to 250 raise uh, damage drain rate decrease from 7 so 20 so it's two less in the late game and that but link duration is increased from 8 seconds to 10 seconds flat so it's always 10 seconds which is pretty good Storm Surge, D damage rescaled from, so it's 10 less, 10 more in the late game. Movement speed, slow increase from, uh, so it's basically increases 5% move speed in the late game. 14 agility replaced with 10% life still on spells. Static link still one armor per second, that's pretty good. Ricky tricks of the trade, mana cost rescaled from 55 to 75 in the late game. Rubik intelligence gain increase from 3.1 to 3.7 so that's a big damage increase as well telekinesis cooldown decrease from 15 seconds in the late game holy crap that is a massive buff you got 
octarine as well that's super super hot low cooldown Aghanim shards throw distance decrease from 50 percent to 35 spells still projectile speed increase from 1200 to 1500 that's quite a lot 250 telekinesis land replaced with minus four second telekinesis to cooldown tanking base intelligence decrease from 19 to 17 burrow strike damage rescaled in the late game exactly the same caustic finale damage decreased from 130 to 110 in the late game level 10 talents sandstorm damage per second decrease from 20 to 15 shadow demon illusion damage decreased from 75 percent in the late game to 50 percent that's a big flipping nerf illusions now also have 20 50 60 70 bonus base damage decreased by outgoing damage reduction it looks like yeah shadow demon <laughs> just owns medusa it killed his whole team so this is definitely still the counter to medusa shadow demon 100 percent look at that that's crazy man that's so much damage Shadow Fiend base damage decreased by 5, base agility increased from 20 to 25, Shadow Shaman shackles, Aghanim Shard Serpent Wards, duration decreased from 7 to 6 seconds, Level 10 talent, minus 2 hex cooldown replaced with 10% hex damage amp, Silence Sir Glaives of Wisdom now deals magic damage, it doesn't pierce debuff immunity, this makes its damage effect, debuff immune enemies, it will reduce by our magic resistance, okay, and then intelligence the damage increased 5% less in the late game. Slardar, Sliver and Crush, radius decreased, wow! For how flipping OP Slada is, that's all they did is decrease the range of Sliver and Crush by 25. whoop dee doo Level 20 talent Sliver and Crush damage decreased from 150 to 125. And then level 25 talent Sliver and Crush cooldown reduction decreased from 4 seconds to 3 seconds. Slot. Strength gain increased from 1.9 to 2.1. Intelligence gain increased from 1.7 to 1.9. Level 15 talent Shadow Dance regen increased from 40 to 50. Snapfire, little shredded damage increased from 2505 in the late game. And Mortimer's Kisses, impact damage increased from 160, so 320 to 360 in the late game. Back to base health regen decreased from 2 to 1, good. Dispersion, minimum radius decreased from 4 to 300. Reality now only triggers one cast of Spectral Dagger per illusion, good, because that was broken. Haunt cooldown now decreased from 180 to 160. Talent plus 5 to all attributes replaced with minus 100 desolate ally radius. Spirit Baker Bulldoze movement speed bonus decreased from 10 to 20 to 25. It's 5% 5 in the late game. Level level 20 talent, 25% greater bash damage replaced with 70% greater bash chance. 200 charge of darkness bonus speed replaced with Bulldoze grants 400 all damage shield, bar shield barrier. Level 25 talent plus 20 greater bash chance replaced with 25 greater bash damage. And level, level 25 talent borders 500 all damage da barrier with 200 charge of darkness speed bonus. Okay. Storm Spirit remnant activation speed decreased from 1 to 0 0.75 seconds. That's actually really good. Level 10 talent 20 attack speed replaced with 150 attack range when overloaded. Sven intelligence gain from 1.3 to 1.5. Storm Hammer Aghanim set the now increases damage by 180 if Sven travels with the Storm Hammer. I mean, I guess that's okay. Warcry, Aghanim Shard, Passive Aura now provides a 3% movement speed. That's pretty good. Talent, level 10 talent, Warcry duration increase from 3 to 4 seconds, and then level 20 talent, 8%. Warcry movement speed replaced with 20% God Strength Slow Resistance. Techie's Blast of current HP self damage decrease from 30 to 20% flat. Templar Assassin now deals 200 damage instantly upon arrival and activation of the trap as if it was successfully fully charged. Terror Blade Demon, Demon Zeal now applies Reflection Illusions to a 50% effectiveness. Terror Wave Wave effect now follows Terror Blade and disappears if he is killed. Talent 10, level 10 talent reflection cooldown decrease from 3 to 4 seconds and level 15 talent 257 he 275 health replaced with minus 20 metamorph metamorphous cooldown. Tide Hunter Gush, mana cost decrease from 100 to so it's 100 flat late game. Dead in the water attacks to destroy from 5 to 4, good. Level 15 talent anchor smash. Damage reduction increased from 25 to 30. Timbersaw base strength increased from 25 to 27. And strength gain increased from 3.2 to 3.5. Max stacks increased from 10, 25, 40 to 50. So 42 in the late game. Stacks per hero increased from 2 to 3. I didn't even know it stacked per hero. So 2 hits is 6 stacks. That's pretty good. Level 10 talent, 200 health replaced with 0.2 reactive armor regeneration per stack. Level 15 talent plus 6 reactive armor stacks and duration replaced with 6 max 1 hero attack reactive armor stacks. Okay. 
Tinker cast range decreased from 600 to 450, thank God. Heat seeking missile range decreased from 2000 to 1004. Heat seeking missile range decreased from 2000 to 1500, thank God. Rearm now grants 50 is a 25% magic resistance for four seconds. I mean, that's kind of whatever. Warp flare now applies a rule, now also applies a root. Okay, like a nerf and buff. Tiny bonus tree grab bonus damage increased from 20 to 25 to 35. Cooldown, inc cooldown decreased to 13 seconds, so it's the same in the late game. <coughs> Aghanim shard now increases damage for trees thrown so his axe is going to benefit from that by 100 toss bonus damage increase from 100 so 400 so extra 100 damage in late game green protector nature's guys aganim shard movement speed decreased from 15 to 8 percent good living armor heal per second decreased by one in the late game and mana cost increased by five level 10 nature's graph talent cooldown reduction decreased from five seconds to four second troll rule lord fev fervor aganim shard extra chance of extra attack per stack increase from 40 percent 3% to 4%. That's literally pointless. Oh, what is that? Battle Trance now allows Troll Warlord to receive movement orders if there are no valid targets within range. Thank God. Tusk. Warlord Punch now deals 50 damage, 50 bonus damage, which is affected by Crit Multiplier. Crit damage de Critical damage decrease from, so 50% in a late game. Underlord Pit of Malice now deals 40, 25, 40, 50 damage upon root. And cast point improved from 0 0.35 to 0 0.25. Fiend's Gate cast point improved from 4.5 to 0 0.2. Undying Soul Rip takes Undying into account when counting nearby units. Good. Mana cost decreased from 110 to 100. Tombstone Aghanim Shard Stun Duration on Tombstone Destruction decreased from 3.2 seconds. Honestly, I didn't even know it did stun on Destruction after Aghanim Shard. I had no idea. Crash Golem Slow Duration decreased from 6 to 4 seconds. Ursa base health regen increase from 0.5 to 1.0. Overpower slow resistance increase from 10 to 25 to 5% more in the late game. And damage per across and damage per attack increased. So it's exactly the same in the late game. Just the early game is more. Ventral spirit never swap damage increase from 50 to 450. That's so much. No longer reduces damage taken. Now gives vengeful spirit and allied target gain a damage barrier for 10 seconds. Barrier health is equal to the spell's damage value. <coughs> if you have a new solar crest and cast it and then swap them, they have four 850 damage shield. Level 15 talent wave of terror arm reduction increased from four to five. Level 20 talent 15 second never swap never swap cooldown replace with wave of terror deals 20% of Reduction damage and armor level 20 level 25 talent plus 40 percent never swap damage replaced with minus 16 never swap cooldown venom answer plague ward damage rescaled so two less in the late game noxious plague initial damage increased 50 more in the late game and cooldown decreased by nothing in the late game it's just early game decrease level 15 talent poison sting decreased from 8% to 6%. Viper Never Toxin no longer applies break, but now applies attack speed slow by 60 in the late game. And Viper now applies a break, Viper Strike. Movement slow increased from 80% in the late game still. Cast point improved from 0 0.3 to 0 0.2. That's good. Visage. Soul Assumption damage is now calculated before reductions. And then level 15 talent soul assumption targets increase from 2 to 3. Void Spirit Intelligence gain increased from 2.3 to 2.5. Resonant Pulse barrier per hit hero increased by 10 in the late game. Level 15 talent managed regen increased from 1.5 to 1.75. Warlock base strength in decreased from 24 to 22 fatal bonds mana cost increased from 110 to so 10 more across the board weaver level 10 talent strength decrease from 9 to 8 and level 25 talent plus one gemini attack no longer applies to attacks made via shikuki with agam shard thank god that was so op wind ranger power shot now slows the target for up to 30 percent decreasing decreasing based on time charge enemies already hit similar to the damage dealt Slow duration for second. Mana cost rescaled from 20 from 90 to 100 flat. Wind run no longer slows enemies. Corresponding Aghanim Scepter effect was also removed. Aghanim Scepter re damage reduction increased from 35 to 45. Gale force duration increased from 3 to 3.5 seconds. Level 10 talent 225 wind run replaced. 225 wind run radius replaced with 20% power shot slow. 
Winter Riven, base mana regen increased by from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5. Winter's Curse, cast range increased to 800, same as the late game. Mana cost decreased, but the same in the late game. Now provides vision over the affected unit area, over the affected unit and surroundings, that's good. Which Hunter Voodoo Restoration no longer deals damage, and the healing is increased by 4 in the late game. Level 25 Talent, 1.5 Max Health Voodoo Restoration Heal Damage replaced with 2% Max Health Voodoo Restoration Heal. Wraith King, Reincarnation Cooldown increased from 180, so 20 seconds more in the late game. Aghanim Shard, Additional Skeletons decreased from 3 to 2. And Aghanim Scepter Cooldown, Reduction decreased from 30 seconds to 15 seconds. Level 15 Talent Skeletons Attack Damage decreased from 26 to 23. And then Level 20 Talent Minimum Skeleton Spawn decreased from 6 to 5. Level 20 Talent Cleave increased from 25 to 35. And Zeus is Lightning Bolt now deals double damage to creeps wow and that is the entire and that is the entire 7.35 and that is the entire 7.35 gameplay update now let's look at 7.35b which was released which was released on the 21st of december so yesterday so blood pack no longer restores mana okay so bloodstone doesn't restore mana anymore okay eternal shroud eternal endurance stack duration decreased from 8 seconds to 6 seconds, okay, so it's got nerf. Helm of the Iron Will, armor bonus decreased from f 6 to 5. Health regen bonus decreased from 5 to 4. Kai and Sand, spell amp bonus decreased from 16 to 12. Mage Slayer, spell damage debuff increased from 35 to 40 percent. Shy, so high. Mana style attack speed bonus increased from 12 to 15. Meet your hammer recipe cost decreased by 200. That's good. Pervi's armor bonus decreased and health bonus decreased. Sanjan Yasha, attack speed bonus increased from 12 to 20. Shiva's Guard, armor bonus decreased from 20 to 16. All attributes decreased from 8 to 6. So overall nerf for Shiva's Guard. Health regen bonus decreased from 8 to 6. Solar Crest, armor bonus decreased from 6 to 4. Good. All attribute bonus decrease from 6 to 4, good. Shine mana cost increase from 0 to 100, oh good, so it does have a mana cost now, good. No longer grants bonus move speed nor attack speed when cast on self. That makes sense. Veil of Discord, armor bonus decrease from 6 to 5. Vlad's no longer has a recipe and its total cost is reduced and it can now be dissembled, that's good. Yasha attack speed bonus increase from 12 to 15. Yasha and Kai spell amp bonus decrease from 16% to 12%. Attack speed bonus increased from 12 to 20. Abaddon, Curse of Avernus, duration decreased from 4.5 to 4. Curse DPS decreased to Curse DPS decreased to 50 from 60 in the late game. Alchemist movement slow, movement slow increased to 7% in the late game. Beastmaster cooldown decreased to 30 seconds. So that's decreased early game, but it's the same in the late game. Cooldown decrease from, wow, that's actually a good cooldown decrease from 100, so 60, and that's just the same in the late game, just early decrease. Bristleback damage threshold decreased from 300, so instead of 225 in the late game, it's 200, that's good. Crystal Maiden clone no longer has base magic resistance. <laughs> Who would have even thought it would? So stupid. Base armor increased by 1. Shadow Wave damage increased from 135 to 145 in the late game. Death Prophet duration rescaled from 3 to 6 to 5 seconds in the late game. Spirit Siphon base charge restore time increased by 2 seconds. Aghanim Shard fear duration decreased from 1.2 to 1 second. Elder Titan wake up damage threshold increased. So 250 in the late game is exactly the same, but over the early game is different. Baseless Void no longer procs on denies. That's, that's definitely enough. And bonus damage decreased to 25 in the late game. Pretty good. Level 15 Tarnock damage decreased to 40. Juggernaut Blade Fury mana cost rescaled to 100 flat. Damage per tick increased by 10. That's good. The Shrek split of cooldown increased from 9 to 11. Sh Aghanim Shard radius increased per strike decreased from 55 to 45. Lightning Storm attack speed attack slow decreased from 50 to 20, 30, 40, 50. That makes sense. Lone Druid Spirit Link shared life still decreased from 20 to 6 to 65 to 60 in the late game. Lycan damage on wolves decreased overall by 2 in the late game. And shape shift help shape shift health bonus increased by 50 across the board. Critical damage increased by 20 in the late game. 
Medusa's mana shield value is now calculated before Eternal Shroud's mana restoration. Good, because that was broken. Monkey King base agility increased by 1. Wukong's command soldier attack interval decreased from 1.2 to 1.1. Morphling morph duration increased from 20 seconds to 24 seconds. That's definitely a buff. Murta pierce the veil. Aghanim shard bonus spell amp now applies retroactively. Nice. You can get loads of kills with Murta. Get the shard and you got all this spell damage. Nice. Omni Knight. Guardian Angel base charge restore time decreased from 60 70 60 80 70 60 to 70 60 50 outward destroyer mana pool to damage decreased 15 to 16 percent in late game good astral prison damage it decreased from so it's early game it's worse essence flux agoning scepter cooldown increase from 60 to 80 good sanity's eclipse mana mana allergy no longer deals damage okay good wash buckle slash Slash width increased from 125 to 140. That's a buff. Stifling dagger attack damage increased from 70 to 75% in the late game. And Phantom Strike bonus attack speed increased by 20 in the late game. That's pretty good. Blur duration increased from 25 to 30 seconds. That's good. Max health damage increased from 25 to 28. That's good. Rubik cooldown decreased on spell still. Same in the late game, but 20 seconds in early. Spirit Breaker, Charge of Darkness, Flactory Candor now procs on impact rather than cast. So you have to charge and hit them or use uses ult. Sven, Great Cleave, Strength Bonus increase from 2, 4, 6, 8 to 12 in late game. Techie Sticky Bomb, Stick Radius increase from 250 to 300. That is a big buff. Explosion Radius increase from 300 to 350. Templar Assassin mana cost decreased on refraction from 95 to, from 90 to 85. Cooldown decreased from 17 seconds to 16 seconds, and Cyberblade range increased from 550 to so 7 so 50 across the board. Terror Blade conjure, conjure image illusion damage taken decreased from 300 to 275. Whirling Death mana cost increased from 80 to 95 late game. Active bonus armor decreased from 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 late game. Tiny Avalanche. Damage increased by 20 in the late game. Toss damage increased by another 20 in the late game. And tree grab splash damage increased in the early to slightly more, and then 100% still. And then Vengeful Spirit Aghanim Scepter Illusion no longer has bonus movement speed. I think that makes sense. Viper Aghanim Shard Max Stack decreased from 8 to 7. Level 10 Talent Poison Attack Magic Resistance Reduction decreased from 5 to 4%. And Talent Poison Sting Attack Street Blow decreased from 25 to 20. Wind Range Base Damage increased by 2. That's actually quite a lot. Power Shot Slow increased by 5%. And Witch Dog the Damage Ward. Witch Dog to Death Ward damage decreased from 70. So by 5. That's, that's really not a nerf <laughs> at all, really by five consider his win rate is like 52 percent so that is the entire gameplay update for 7.35 and 7.35 b thank you so much for listening guys i really appreciate it if you made it this far thank you so much guys leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see next peace